So here are the in-app settings for the VO4 A129 Plus Duo camera. So at first you have this video resolution setting and if I click on that, so it gives you a list of the resolutions and the frame rates present in order to set the camera for recording. So first of all, you get this 2560 into 1600p at 30 frames per second. So actually this camera can go up to 1600p resolution, but it has not been mentioned explicitly outside in any marketing material. And this is an excellent thing by this camera. Coming to the main selling point that this camera records at 2560 into 1440p at 60 frames per second. Now you might find many 1440p cameras out there which record only at 30 frames per second but this camera can record 1440p at 60 frames per second and that makes a huge difference. Following that you have 1440p at 30 frames then again you have a 1080 at 60 frames per second but this is a 2560 into 1080 at 60 fps then you have 2560 into 1080 at 30 fps then you have the 1296p resolution following that you have the full hd at 60 frames per second full hd at 30 frames per second then you have a hd 720p at 120 frames per second now this is game changing because i haven't seen any camera support 120 frames per second up until now Although the resolution is less, it is just a high definition 720p resolution, but having support for 120 frames per second is a pioneering thing, is an excellent thing. Following that again, you have a 720p at 60fps and a 720p at 30 frames per second. Now I really like this kind of variety and this kind of a convenience the in-app settings provides in order to set the desired resolution and FPS. And among all these, I definitely like this 720p at 120fps. Following that, I really like the fact that it has a 1440p also at 60fps. And then it also supports a maximum resolution of 1600p at 30fps. So that was regarding the video resolution. Then you have the loop recording option where you can completely turn off loop recording or you can set it to a minimum of 1 minute all the way up to 10 minutes. Then you have the option to enable or disable the audio which is the mic then you have exposure value for front and the rear camera which you can increase or decrease based on your requirement you have the hdr option where you can turn it off completely or turn it on or make the camera set it on or off by setting it at auto then you have the auto hdr time you can set the time manually when the camera turns on or turns off the hdr then you have motion detection option also present then there is a G sensor option which you can toggle around with the sensitivity of the G sensor or turn it off entirely. Then you have the date stamp option which you can turn on or off for the video. Then you have the bitrate option where you can select low, medium or high bitrate. Then you have the time lapse recording. If you click on that, you have the option to turn it off completely. You have the option to have time lapse recording starting from 100 milliseconds. Then you have the 200 milliseconds option. Then you have 1 second, 2 second all the way up to 10 minutes so that's a long range of options you have get in order to record time lapse recording then you have the system setting option wherein you can set the time zone you can synchronize the time to your smartphone you have the boot delay option you have the parking mode option which can turn it off or you can set it at auto event detection you can set also time lapse for one frame per second two frames per second all the way up to 10 fps then lastly, you also have the low bitrate recording. Now I've made in detail a video regarding all of these parking monitoring features. If you are interested, you can go ahead and check that out as well. Then you have the parking recording timer. You can set the maximum or the minimum amount of time you want the camera to record a parking video. Then you have enter parking mode timer. You can set the camera to enter parking mode after a certain duration of about 90 seconds or you can turn it off entirely. Then you have the parking G sensor option for high sensitivity, low sensitivity and medium. Parking motion detection. You have the option to rotate the image. If you click on that, you have the option of turning it off or rotating the front only camera, rotating the rear only camera or rotating both front and the rear camera. Then you have the rear camera mirror option. So you have the option of turning off or turning on the notification sounds. You can select the live video source which is displayed on the app as front camera or the rear camera or both front or both rear you can select based on your requirement you can enable or disable the gps data as well 
Following this, you have the speed unit option, which you can select as kilometer per hour or miles per hour. Then you have the GPS info stamp, wherein you can turn it off completely, or you can make the speed and coordinates appear on the video. You can make only the speed appear, or you can make the coordinates appear. Then you have the camera model stamp, which displays the name of the camera. Then you have the screen saver option, wherein you can enable the camera to turn off the display after a maximum amount of three minutes or a minimum amount of one second, or you can turn it off entirely. Following this, you have the frequency option, which has two options, such as 50 hertz and 60 hertz. Then you have the language of the camera. Following this, you have the format SD card option. Then you have the Wi-Fi name, SSID name. You can change that. You can change the Wi-Fi password. You can select a custom text stamp which you want to appear on the video. You can write down your car license number as well if you want it to appear on the video. Then following that here, it displays the free space on your existing memory card which is inserted into the dash cam. Then you have the reset camera button in order to reset the camera to its factory settings. Lastly, you have the app version of the current VO4 app which you are using and the firmware version of the dash camera. So these are the in-app settings provided within the dash cam and I think these are some of the finest and advanced in-app settings which I have seen in any dash camera till date.